Welcome to the Egg Whisperer Show, a podcast exclusively designed to create more reproductive health awareness and discuss your fertility preservation options. Here is your host, the Harvard-educated fertility specialist, Dr. Amy. Hi, you guys. Thank you for joining me on tonight's Egg Whisperer Show. My name is Dr. Amy, and I'm a fertility doc here in the San Francisco Bay Area. The title of tonight's show is How Old is Too Old to Have a Baby? Let's get started. No matter your age, it's really important to get your tushy checked. What am I talking about? If you've been watching this show, you probably know the elements of the tushy check. Get your tubes checked, ultrasound, sperm, hormones, and your genetic profile. So how does this relate to age? Well, how do you know if your eggs are too old? Well, FSH, estradiol, AMH, and AFC, I'll break it down right now. FSH and estradiol are two hormones. The FSH is secreted by the brain, the estrogen by your ovaries. When we get these levels checked, we do them around cycle day number three, and they give us an idea about how hard your brain is working to talk to your ovaries. Then we have the AMH level, anti-malarian hormone, which is secreted by cells that are surrounding the eggs. The more eggs you have, the higher the AMH. When you get older, the lower the AMH means the lower the egg count. AMH stands for always mean hormone or always meandering hormone. And what I mean by that is these things go up and down over time. They can slowly go up, slowly go down. And I have patients say to me, Dr. Amy, my AMH went up. It's higher than it was three years ago. And I say, you know what? It's just about the same. And those kind of fluctuations are normal. And then we have an ultrasound of your ovaries, and that's where the AFC comes in. We count the little black circles, also known as follicles. They each carry eggs inside, and that number means a lot to me. So I take all that information together, and no matter what the level is, even if it's on the lower side, it never means no. You take your age, these hormone levels, and you get a really good idea about what your pregnancy chances are. And if, for example, you're over 40, that age is more important than any of these levels. Each egg for a woman over 40 has about a 10% chance of being genetically normal. So what I tell my patients who are over 40 is this, have a threshold, give it a length of time of trying and say, after six months, let's reevaluate. Let's see what's going on, repeat these levels, get a better understanding of what you've been through for the past six months, and then start talking about other options. Because I certainly want my patients to be moving on with the next stage of their life and not be constantly seeing me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I am a lot of fun. Being my patient is super fun. We laugh all the time. Fridays, I am the funniest. Mondays, not so much. My jokes get better over the week. So when it comes to seeing me, I want to take care of people right away. I want to help them reach their goals right away. But I know for some people, it can take 13 years, literally. And everyone's journey is not the way they initially envisioned in the very, very beginning. But it's really important to go through the right steps. And every negative test, to me, means one step closer to a positive. I know that sounds like I'm super, super positive and like really, really annoying, and I don't think I am. I just think I like to give people the information that's going to help them the most because being a positive fertility provider, I think is really important because we always get all these negative images about ourselves, decreased ovarian reserve. And when I see those kinds of things on records that come in, I say to myself, and I say to the patient, look, I believe in your fertility. D-O-R does not mean donor. And certainly a medical degree doesn't mean medical deity. And patients share with me stories where doctors have told them, no matter how much money you have, you can never get pregnant with your own eggs. And certainly we basically prove them wrong quite a bit, but not all the time. So there's something called chronological age versus biological age. And this is the thing. You can look amazing on the outside. You might be 40 and you've taken such good care of yourself and 40 isn't old by any means. And then you're really like, you know, biologically, you're 28. But the thing is that your fertility isn't skin deep. Your eggs don't know how amazing you look on the outside. Certainly, it's wonderful that you take such good care of yourself. But if you're 40, your eggs are still 40 on the inside. I wish that I had a tool that I could use to help women grow more eggs once they've run out. I wish I had an answer for patients who, for example, are 44 years old, have an AMH of 0.2, and are looking for anything to have a kid with their own egg. But at the end of the day, we have other options. I call it creative family building, and they're great options, but you have to be ready for them, and I understand that. I have patients that come to me and say, Amy, I want to do IVF. I'm 47 years old. I'm ready to have a baby, but it has to be with my own egg. And I say to them the following, we're going to go into this expecting that it's not going to work, but I think it's so important that a woman be given an option to use her own eggs if she wants, 
because a man can have a pregnancy basically as long as he's producing sperm, no matter the age. So who am I to limit a woman's chances? Going through the process of going through an IVF cycle, even if we don't make it to an egg retrieval, is always worth it for me because then that patient of mine will learn more about her biology than she ever has before. But at least attempting the process of IVF or taking fertility drugs gives her an opportunity to say, yeah, I don't know that this is worth it for me to go all the way through an IVF cycle, but yes, I still really want a baby, and I think now I'm ready to consider donated eggs. So chronological age versus biological age, certainly it's super important to be super healthy. However, when it comes to our ovaries, you can't put Botox in your ovaries. You've probably heard me say that before, and you constantly hear me say your fertility isn't skin deep. So take advantage of your fertility no matter what your body size is. But at the end of the day, if you're 40, your ovaries are still going to be acting 40 no matter what your biological age tells you. So here are some tips no matter what, how old you are for giving yourself the best chance of a healthy pregnancy no matter your age. So number one is exercising. So being in great shape and being physically fit is super important. And the reason is not just for baby's health, but also for your recovery postpartum. Again, eating healthy is important. You've hear, heard me talk about the fertility diet, which stands for diagnosis, IVF, endometrial testing, and transfer. But this kind of diet over here, this is more related to foods and eating green leafy vegetables and following a Mediterranean type diet, which is so common here in California and easy for us to follow, which has been shown to be very beneficial from a fertility standpoint. And the supplements I recommend to my patients are CoQ10 until you're done having your babies, prenatal vitamins, and folic acid, and Part of the H in the Tushy method isn't just checking your fertility hormones, but also checking things like thyroid and vitamin D. So if your vitamin D is low, I'll add on vitamin D to this list of supplements that I ask my patients to take. And if you're 45, that's awesome. You want to have a baby? You obviously think that you are ready and you're strong enough to do so. And I will empower my patients with the information they need to give themselves the best chance of a healthy pregnancy. But I'll also make sure that they know that having a pregnancy over 45 isn't risk-free and having a pregnancy over 50 isn't risk-free either. So the things that we do are look at cholesterol, diabetes, cardiac stress test, mammogram, and certainly there are other tests that your doctor might want to do for you. But making sure that you're in great physical health and won't have the pregnancy complications, or you won't be at higher risk for the complications at risk that we worry about, for example, preeclampsia and any cardiac events is super key before you move forward into a pregnancy. But at the end of the day, no matter how healthy you are, your age alone might increase your risk of having problems in pregnancy. So having a spe specialist that will be on hand to guide you through this process, who feels very confident in your ability to have a baby, that is super important. Menopause and pregnancy. What? How can you be pregnant and have menopause? It's like, how does that make sense? Well, guess what? You can. You just need a healthy uterus to have a baby. And one day there are going to be men running around everywhere with a healthy uterus that's transplanted and having a baby. And the reason why I bring that up is this. There's no such thing as a donor egg emergency. So if you're over a certain age and you still want to have hope that you can carry a pregnancy with your own eggs, that's okay. Because sometimes just having that hope and believing in your own fertility, sometimes it works. But if you feel pressure that you need to make a decision right away, know that you don't need to. Because if your ovaries aren't working, we don't need them when it comes to a pregnancy. We use hormones like estradiol for a couple of weeks and then you take progesterone and we mimic ovulation in this way. And you continue those hormones through 10 weeks of pregnancy. You don't even need fallopian tubes to carry a pregnancy when it comes to using science like IVF. So remember, that no matter what your age is, some women run out of eggs even at an earlier age than they're supposed to. It's normal to run out over the age of 40. 10% of women in their 30s run out of healthy eggs, but they can still carry a healthy pregnancy with creative family building. And that's what I do a lot of. I, my goal is always to help patients create a family the way they initially wanted to, but I know that I, not, I don't always have the opportunity to do that. And sometimes we have to be more creative about how we do things using donated eggs, donor sperm, donated embryos, and also using gestational carriers. So no matter what your goals are, meet with a specialist, talk to them about your goals, and don't use age as a limiting factor for you to be able to be a parent. So now I want to go back and get on my soapbox before I end tonight's show. So here are some little egg whisperer pearls of wisdom. These are the things that I recommend. 
for every woman who's 21 years of age, who has a family member like a mother or a sister who has gone through early menopause, I strongly encourage you to get your fertility levels checked, the FSH, estradiol, and AMH, as well as genetic screens like Fragile X and a chromosome, chromosome analysis. Every woman by the age she's 25 should get her fertility hormone levels checked, and depending on your situation, your relationship status, and your, and your goals, consider doing egg freezing. If a woman is 32 and would like at least two kids and isn't going to start trying for a family in the next five years, I strongly encourage her to freeze eggs or freeze embryos, okay? And then if you've had a baby at your postpartum visit, get your levels checked. I see this so often, that fertility myth where people are told that if you have a baby, the next one's going to be easy. I wish that was true. I so, so wish that was going to be true. So at your postpartum visit, if you haven't had your levels checked, get your AMH done. See what's going on. Think about what you want to do next. And don't wait too long to have another baby. And certainly if egg freezing or embryo freezing or something that you want to do, do it. And if a woman is 37 starting a family, strongly consider doing an embryo cryopreservation procedure, which is IVF or egg freezing, okay? Or both, depending on your situation. And then last but not least, my birth control pill and IUD soapbox. For everyone who starts birth control pills, especially at a young age, and for example, I meet these women who are on birth control pills for like over 10 years, get your AMH checked before you start them. And then get your AMH checked every year or two as you're staying on them so that you're not tricked by the birth control pills. See, birth control pills can mask infertility. They make you feel like you're having regular cycles, but indeed, you're not. These cycles are induced by the hormones. And if you weren't on the hormones, your periods might be irregular, and then you would have maybe seen someone and gotten your levels checked sooner or later so you can have the option to preserve your fertility. I have lots of stories of patients who started birth control pills at 17, stopped at 32, and never had a period later, and then they were diagnosed with something called primary ovarian insufficiency, which is also known as early menopause. But had someone offered them this kind of testing that I'm describing to you right now, it could have been caught earlier and she could have had options that she doesn't have anymore. Same thing for an IUD. Before you get an IUD placed inside the uterus, get an AMH level checked. The IUD lasts five years, so some people just forget about their fertility. Maybe get your AMH checked every couple years after that and ask yourself the questions that I always ask my patients. How old are you? How many kids do you want? What is it going to take to get what you want? And are you willing to do it? Okay, so that's my soapbox. Well, you guys, thank you for joining me on tonight's show. How old is too old to have a baby? Well, you tell me. Seriously, I individualize care for each and every one of my patients. No matter your age, I believe in you if you want to be a parent. No matter what your age is, of course there are limits. But certainly with more and more people freezing their eggs, with more and more people delaying childbearing to 40, 45, 47, 48, certainly as fertility providers, we have to be more open-minded about how we can help them have babies as safely as possible. So thank you for watching tonight's show. Remember to find a provider that's positive and believes in your fertility. And if you're not getting that kind of support, create your own fertility team, create your own sort of mind body center and get in the zone, what I call the fertility zone. And I wish you guys all the best of luck. And I really hope you tune into the show next week. Have a great night. Thank you so much for listening and making the Egg Whisperer show a part of your weekly routine. To find show notes and a full transcript for this episode, visit dramy.org and look under the blog tab. While you're there, you can find a link for the Egg Whisperer newsletter, which keeps you in the know about fertility news. You can also find Dr. Amy and the Egg Whisperer show on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. If you'd like to learn even more, Dr. Amy offers classes at the Egg Whisperer School, eggwhispererschool.com, or you can request a consultation on dramy.org. Thank you so much for tuning in and for sharing the Egg Whisperer show with others. Keep sparkling and have a great day.